everyone. I'm Janice and I am one of the Meal Makeover Moms. Liz is on vacation this week, so I'm here in Meal Makeover Moms kitchen all by myself. Well, not really. I have my two fabulous interns with me. Margot is at the camera, behind the camera. And we have Jenny who was also helping out. This kitchen was a complete mess a half hour ago. We were testing recipes and photographing recipes and there was stuff everywhere. And these two dug in and cleaned it up so it looks clean. Just don't look anywhere here from uh, that viewpoint. So anyway, uh, Janice, I told you, Meal Makeover Moms. The blog is Meal Makeover Moms Kitchen. And today I was going to share with you what I got in my CSA this week. Now CSA is Community Supported Agriculture. And I have been a member of a CSA here in Melrose since the first time it started, which I think it was about 15 years ago. And what it means is that you pay in at the beginning of the season, a certain amount of money, I think I pay maybe four or $500 a year. And every week I go to the, my pickup place with my usable bags and they lay out all the produce. And they say, this week we have blueberries, this week we have carrots and they tell you how much you can take. So you take your little bag or box around and you put in your produce. And you never know really what you're going to get week to week, which is what I love about it. It's forced me to try new fruits and new vegetables that I normally would not buy in the grocery store. So my husband actually went, John went to pick the, this CSA basket up this week. It was two days ago. So we're going to see what we got. Aha! Carrots. Now that's a carrot bunch. And these carrot greens, you can actually cook with these. You can saute them and you can add them to things. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to use the greens as well as the carrots. I cut up the carrots the other night. I had some people over and I just sliced up these carrots and put out a little bit of dip. I'm telling you, these are really nice carrots. Fresh from the garden. Aha! These are baby red onions. So before they get really big, and I think what I'm going to do with this is when I make guacamole next, I always add some red onion. So I'm going to chop this up fine and add it to my guacamole, probably over the weekend. And this, aha, look at that. Look at that beautiful head of lettuce. What kind of lettuce is this? It's not romaine, I don't think. Is it butter? cup or loose leaf or whatever you call that. As you can see, I didn't do research on this lettuce. It's lettuce. I will make a salad. What else do we have here? This looks like a cucumber. I believe it is. That will go with the lettuce in the salad. And oh my, check this out. Summer squash, a little saute. Maybe I use some of the red onions with this. I might toss it in olive oil, put some of the onion, and roast it on the grill in a grill basket. So that's fun. And then let's see here. Ah, blueberries. Love the blueberries. So I think I'll probably either make our blueberry muffins, or I might, I did make blueberry pancakes the other day, or I might make a smoothie. I might just put it on top of my cereal with yogurt, make a parfait. And these are gooseberries. Now, speaking of something that I wouldn't, there you go. I wouldn't go to the store and buy gooseberries because I wouldn't know what the heck to do with them. I'm still not really sure what I'm going to do with them. I might make some jam though. My neighbor Molly made gooseberry jam last year. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Make some jam. And then, voila, this is a garlic scape. Has anyone ever cooked with garlic scapes before? If you have, leave a message. I have my fabulous intern Jenny looking at the comments. Of course, we put on Facebook this morning that I would be doing this Facebook Live, and Facebook in their infinite wisdom decided to only send it to 70 people out of our almost 50,000 fans. So, thanks for nothing, Facebook. <laughs> okay, a garlic scape. When garlic grows in the ground, puts off these what we call scapes okay and so now what they do is they cut off the tops the scapes and they smell garlicky not as pungent as the root as a clove of garlic but still a beautiful garlic flavor 
So I've been seeing online garlic scape pesto, and I love pesto. So I decided, why not make a garlic scape pesto? So here's what we're going to do. Mind you, I have not done this before. Liz, I know you're horrified, because we usually test recipes many times before we would actually show them to you. Not me, not today, it's the summer, it's 90 whatever degrees outside. So I'm just going to give it a whirl, so to speak in my food processor. So here are the garlic scapes. I think we have about 15 scapes just chopped up. And then a lot of pesto uses pine nuts, but I happen to love walnuts and I had walnuts. So we're going to use walnuts. And then we've got basil, beautiful basil. I'd like to say it's all from my garden, but my plant isn't producing that much pesto, uh, basil. So some of it is from the store. And then what else? We, of course, must have Parmesan cheese and pesto. Of course, I would probably add double the cheese, but I'm going to start with a half cup. So it was about a cup of basil leaves, about 15 scapes, a half cup of walnuts. And here we have a half cup of extra virgin olive oil, which is another necessary ingredient in pesto. And then we're going to see what happens when we process it. And you know what? We're going to wing it. If it needs more olive oil, we're going to add more olive oil. If it needs something else, we'll add something else. I know we're going to need a little bit of salt, kosher salt, and a little bit of ground black pepper, but eh, I don't have my pepper mill right here, so I'll add that afterwards. Here we go. Pardon the noise for a moment. already smell the deliciousness. Margo, what do you think? You want to look down and then we'll decide as a group. Okay, Facebook fans, what do you think? A little more olive oil? So that depends on what you're going to do with this. This would be a really nice spread for a sandwich. If you were making a panini, I might leave it like this. And it might even be good for mixing with some hot pasta. So we might actually be good. I am going to try it. I'm going to give it another little whir, as it were. Okay. A little bit more. And if you wanted, you could just drizzle a little bit more olive oil in there. But I think for now, I'm going to eat it as it is. So I kind of like that texture. Wow. Okay, that has big flavor. That's even more garlicky than I anticipated. <laughs> so I actually, when I'm done, I'm gonna add a little bit more Parmesan cheese. I might even add a little bit more basil and a little bit more olive oil just to mellow it out a little bit. I think it needs a wee bit more salt also. And I'll add some pepper. So I'm going to do that. Margo would like to say hello to Petra and say she can't wait to see you soon. She's horrified that I did that, but she, that's what she told me. So I hope Petra's watching. Hi, Mom. Okay, what else do we have to talk about? Now, don't be shaking that camera there, Margo. <laughs> oh, I know what I want to talk about. You may be wondering why I have a can of black beans. Would that go with pesto? It might, but let me tell you something. This is the part of the can of black beans that you usually drain and rinse because we drain and rinse our beans usually to get rid of some of the sodium if that's an issue. But this is called something special. It's called aqua faba, A-Q-U-A, which means what? water, liquid, faba, which is bean. So what you drain from a can of beans, whether it's chickpeas or cannellini beans or black beans, is called aquafaba. And if you go on the internet, it's all a buzz, aquafaba. There's a lot of good nutrition in here. 
and you can whip this up into meringues, you could make um, a whipped topping, a chocolate mousse. In fact, I want you to go to Teaspoon of Spice. Two dietitians, good friends of mine, Deanna and Serena, and Serena on Facebook Live just an hour ago showed everyone how to use this aquafaba from your beans and how you can incorporate into various things like meringues and a chocolate mousse that she made today, which I cannot wait to make, which I'm going to make with this little chocolate mousse for dessert. Okay, what else do we have, girls? When you make your pesto, you might want to add it to some pasta. I like pesto with tortellini, so I just cook up some tortellini with uh, broccoli. So when you cook the tortellini, I just add even frozen broccoli if you don't have fresh. For the last couple of minutes, cook that. Add some pesto, a little extra Parmesan cheese if you want, and that's a fast, easy weeknight meal. What else can you do with it? I mentioned on a panini, you could spread it on a cracker and have a little bit of goat cheese on top. It's really, pesto to me is one of those magic ingredients that adds flavor and appeal to all sorts of dishes. So I think that is what I wanted to show you today. I think that this was um, a success. I'll make a few tweaks. Do we have any comments, Jenny, or questions? Uh, Colleen said it might be good as a dip. Uh, might be good as a dip, absolutely. And you know what you, oh, you know what you could do, Colleen, is add some plain Greek yogurt because this might be a little bit too much. But if you put maybe three quarter cup of plain Greek yogurt with a quarter cup of this very intense pesto, I'll bet that would make a really good dip for vegetables. That's a great idea. In fact, hmm, I think I might just do that tonight. I have some friends coming over. I will make that. Anything else, Jenny, that we want to? Just a lot of fan with garlic scapes. Love it. Now, honestly, five years ago, I didn't know a garlic scape from, you know, a skateboard. <laughs> um, so I think it's pretty cool. I love, I love the garlic scapes. And I like that I get them in my CSA because then I have to do something with it. And I actually have more of these. And so I'm going to make probably a quadruple batch after this uh, Facebook Live broadcast is over. And that is it. So the CSA, if you want to join a CSA, just Google it. You probably have one in your area. Back in 1990, there were 60, 60 CSAs in this country. This year, is it this year? <laughs> a few years ago, there are over 12,000 CSAs, Community Supported Agriculture. And as I said, what that means is you put all your money up front, you pay your four or $500 and you say to your farmers, whether it's one farm or we have in our co-op here, it's Farm Direct Co-op here in the northern, uh, north of Boston area. And you give your money and you say, we want a share of your crop. So what you're doing is you're supporting the local farmers. And for example, this year, we don't have peaches. The crop was decimated. We had an early thaw and then it froze, and then another thaw and then it froze again. So the peach farmers, they don't have, they have maybe just a few peaches. So we're not going to get any in our CSA. And I already paid that peach farmer, but you know what? I feel really good about that because I don't want him to go out of business or her to go out of business because of the weather. So I want to support the farmer and say, here's some money to sustain you through the year, even if you don't have a great crop. So that's what I love about my CSA. Plus it, as I said, it sort of encourages me to try new things. So for now, I am going to make some more garlic scape pesto and I hope you all had a great fourth weekend and you can go out and enjoy this summer and eat all the local fresh produce that you can. Signing off.